Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to the Salvation Army here at Canton for this second Sunday in Advent. We say a big thank you to Carol Bynum for the lovely flowers at the front of the hall. And here are the announcements for this week and the coming days. Uh, tomorrow at 1.45 we have our home league here in the hall. And then at 7.30 we have our, our lady, ladies meeting, our ladies fellowship. And uh, tomorrow evening at 7.30 it is all things Christmassy. That's Christmas crafts, Christmas treats and a Christmas quiz. This coming Friday at 7.45 we have our home for Christmas. A concert featuring Canton Band, Canton Sing Company, and soloist Anwyn Pike, and being compared by our divisional leader, Major Roger Batt. Uh, entry is by ticket only. You must get a ticket. The tickets are free, but you must get a ticket because there is a, a limited number that we can have here at that time. Tickets are available from Carl, from Caitlin, and from Claire. And next Sunday, we, we meet here for worship again at 10 a.m. We look, at, look ahead a few weeks to our core carol services. I say a few weeks, it's not many weeks actually now. Really, that's the 19th of December, Sunday the 19th of December. And we will, as, as usual, have a YP, Young People's Carol Service, in the morning at 10 a.m. And then there will be a whole core carol service at 5 p.m. that day. In core family news, um, we're very pleased to hear that uh, Peter Harry has been released from hospital. Uh, but Mary still, unfortunately, is in hospital, so we continue to think about Peter and Mary at this time, as we do all our members of our fellowship who are unwell at this time. But we do say congratulations to Jessica Brown, who turned 18 yesterday, so big congratulations to Jessica. I would just remind you that today is the last day that we can use the core post box over there in the corner. So if you have um, Christmas cards for members of the core, please put them in the, in the box there. Um, and make a donation. Uh, the donations are in aid of the Love Elliot Trust and you can make that donation to Sue. And next week we will have a board up at the back of the hall for those who wish to attach Christmas cards addressed to the whole core. Today of course is our toy service and we will be having that during the first song uh, after the Advent ceremony. Our leaders this morning are our divisional leaders, Majors Roger and Noreen Batt, and we're very pleased to see them. I will just say that uh, they've just told me that they have to head up to North Wales uh, to conduct a, a meeting this, this evening. So they will be leaving fairly promptly after the meeting, so they're not being rude and rushing off. They've got a, they've got a, they've got a long journey, so uh, that's why they will be heading off. Uh, but now we, we uh, will take part in our second Advent ceremony and the lighting of the candle. streets would have been very noisy with so many people. It was into this noisy town that Mary and Joseph came, walking slowly as they were very tired from their long journey. A kind innkeeper let them rest in the stable. The people outside were still rushing around, trying to find somewhere to stay. But here, with just the gentle sounds of the animals, Jesus was born. This was no ordinary baby. He was a long awaited baby who would bring peace to the world if only the world would let him. Sadly, the world seems to have forgotten how to have peace. Power and greed seem to have more importance than peace, and disease and war have taken over. But God wants us to be still, to listen to him, to stop rushing around, to listen to what has to be said to us. This Christmas, will you make time to put this special baby at the centre of your celebration, or, or will you be too busy, just like the Bethlehem people? Let us pray, Lord Jesus, as we get ready for your coming to us. As a baby, we remember that you came in the quiet of the night away from the Bethlehem street where the people would have been too busy to notice you. We pray for people all over the world in the hope that they will remember you came to give 
them please we ask that he will help us to have the gift of peace in our hearts that we can spread it throughout our world and that we will always keep you as the center of our world thank you god we sing a song number 118 a little child of god Please be seated. And good morning to you. And we just had a little moment there that you probably weren't aware of, but I hadn't put on the song that the youngsters had chosen <laughs> onto the meeting plan. So I, I'm not sure whether the band were. So thank you so much, Carl. That was so smooth. And this is what happens, isn't it? When we come to worship, we come with the intention of being with Jesus 
being with God in Christ and really being focused on him. And then something happens that we, were not, we weren't prepared for. And we have to embrace that and allow our souls to come, still come, into the presence of who God is. We sang there, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And in the Advent period, we prepare ourselves for the coming of God in Christ to our world. But there's also an invitation from God that we come into his world, into the world of who he is. And that's part of the essence of worship, to come into the place, into the world of who God is. So as we think today about uh, coming into God, coming into our world, and us coming into God's world, there'll be times for celebration, for reflection, for listening, for receiving. And we're going to receive your gifts for the choice service in, this, uh, in our next song, which is, um, if you've followed in the songbook 104, Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. I, I suggest that we keep um, seated for singing, if that's all right. So, and just be aware as we come out to give our gifts, you know, try and keep the social distancing and everything like that as we've got so used to. But we've got four verses so just take your time, come in the moment. Somebody will receive your gifts as we sing to him. Thanks, Carl.
thank you for your generosity and you know how much these toys will mean for children and families in your community. Let's pray God's blessing over the gifts that we've given. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the generosity of the spirit of your people here. And Lord, as we've brought these gifts, and so many of us are so well blessed, and we have so much, and we can buy so much for our own families. Perhaps there are some here who struggle to provide for their own families, and yet they still choose to give for others. Whatever our motives, whatever our wealth or our poverty, Lord, we pray that you will bless the gifts that we have given, but even more so that you will bless those who will receive it. And for some families, this really is going to be such a blessing to receive something so wonderful. So bless these gifts on their way and bless the families who will receive them, Lord. For we ask this in your name. Amen. There's a reading that I'd like to share with you, which is actually it's um, a, a Pentecost reading, but I regard this as an Advent reading as well. Because when we think of the coming of Jesus into the world, we celebrate the nativity and the, the baby and the incarnation and the, 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 the wonderful mystery of who God is. But I think we also have to remember that when we invite God to come into our world, he comes with great power and great authority. He comes to cleanse and restore and renew. Um, so there's something going on with the birth of this baby, of the Christ child, that is going to change the world that we invite him into. It's a reading by um, Bruce Pruer, who is a, 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 who is a minister. Through skyscraper canyons you come, Holy Spirit. Down lanes and arcades you come. From the north, from the south, from within and without. Like wind, like wind, the roar of pure wind. You come sweeping through to renew. In houses of parliament you come, Holy Spirit. Into lawmakers' chambers you come. From above, from below from ally and foe, as truth, as truth, the roar of pure truth, you come, sweeping through to renew. Through grand Gothic arches you come, Holy Spirit, to choir and high altar you come, from the west, from the east, from the font and the feast, like fire, like fire, like the roar of pure fire, you come, sweeping through to renew. Amen. And for this next period of reflection, we're going to listen and receive the gift of music um, from first the singing company, then the songsters, and then the band. And weaved in between those are going to be three Bible readings which explore this wonder of God coming into his world. So singing company, please. Look.
you sat where we sat, then you would see Claire go, wow. And it was wow. The wonder and the beauty of words and music that communicate the story of all that God is. Thank you. That was most beautiful. Thank you. And when we consider the story that we know as Christmas, this Advent, then to understand the God story, we have to think of creation. We have to think of covenant relationship. We have to consider the crib. We have to consider Christ. We have to consider the church. And we have to consider that all of that God story is wrapped up in the community of Father, Son, and Spirit. And so our reading this morning will reflect something of this continued story of God from the beginning of time. And so we read from Genesis chapter 2, and I pick up at the second part of verse 4 through to verse 9, and then some other selected verses from the second chapter. When the Lord God made the universe, there were no plants on the earth and no seed had sprouted because he had not sent any rain and there was no one to cultivate the land. But water would come up from beneath the surface and water the ground. Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed the man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils. And the man began to live. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put sorry, <clears throat> and there he put man he had formed. He made all kinds of beautiful trees grow there and produce good fruit. In the middle of the garden stood the tree that gives life, and the tree that gives the knowledge of what is good and what is bad. And then pick it up at verse 15. Then the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to guard it. He said to him, you may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden except the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. So God, in his graciousness, in his generosity, has given us the gift of life in all its fullness. And let's reflect on that as we listen to the songsters sing Away in the Manger.
you, songsters, for that ministry. And the reminder right at the end of that song, be near me, Lord Jesus. We have an indication in the continued story of God, this redemptive story of why we need Jesus to be close to us. God has created a garden, has asked man to cultivate it and guard it. And now in chapter 3, we see how the companionship and the community of humanity with creation plays out. Now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. The snake asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake replied, that's not true. You will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat. And she thought how wonderful would it be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave it to her husband and he ate it also. As soon as they eaten it, they were given understanding and realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig, tree, fig leaf, uh, leaves together and covered themselves. That evening, they heard the Lord God walking in the garden and they hid from him among the trees. But the Lord God called out to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. Let's reflect on that as the band bring their ministry to us, please.
you think God's trying to tell us something on a silent night away in a manger where the cattle are present but there is this eternal message be near us Lord Jesus we ask thee to stay and in the mystery of this God story we read in Matthew chapter 2 just two verses in this continued search for this kind of right relationship with God we read Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king soon afterwards some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews we saw his star when he came up in the east and we have come to worship him Amen. We have come to worship him. We're so grateful. I'm so grateful for the, for the ministry through music this morning. <laughs> Some of my favourite Christmas tunes and words and melodies, but it's, it's not about the words and the melodies, really, is it? It's about the truth of who God is with us. And as we sing a song together before we listen to what God's given Roger to say to us, um, it's the song, um, Who is He? In yonder stall at his feet, the shepherds fall. It's six verses, it's quite a long song. And, but I've kept all six verses in because it tells the story of how God came into our world and how God is present with us. So although we're going to sing the six verses... You don't have to sing them all if you don't want to. And sometimes you might think, oh, I won't sing and I'll just listen. And it might be that nobody sings and that will be fine. But we'll let this be a real act of listening to who God is in Jesus as we tell the story through song of who Jesus is for us. I'll invite you to stand if you want to, but if you want to remain seated, then that's fine as well. Who is he?
Amen. Amen. Lots of verses. When we were the core officers at Croydon, when we arrived, three of my former divisional commanders from when I was a young boy in Scotland were soldiers. And they all used to nudge me and correct me and advise me on things after the meetings, including never leave verses out of a song because it tells a story. Well, the story is told of a father who one day came home from work and was looking for a time to rest and relax and read his paper. But his wife said, I've got to go out, so will you look after our daughter? But she didn't want her dad to rest and read his paper. She wanted him to play. And he was, what can I do? And suddenly he noticed on his paper there was a picture of the world. So he tore it into pieces, gave it to his daughter and said, now there's a jigsaw for you to do. You put the world back together, then I'll play. Within a very short period of time, she said, Daddy, I'm done. He looked amazed and frustrated that she had done it so quickly. And he said, how did you manage to do that so quickly? She said, easy, Daddy, because in the back of the world, there was a dog, there was a lion, there was a duck, and there were ducklings and lion cubs and puppies. I just put the right babies with the right parents, and the world was fitted together. Advent and Christmas is a time when we wait with the anticipation that the right baby Jesus will be the restorer of our broken world and putting the world back together again. For in his birth, the declaration was made, you will name him Jesus as he will save people from their sins. It is a time to consider the questions that God poses to us in life. And it is time for us equally to ask of God the right questions in life. And we see that in our readings that we read this morning. In Genesis, we see that God asks the question of humanity. And in Matthew, humanity asks the question of God. The Garden of Eden depicts life. It is bountiful in all its provision, but it also has boundaries for the protection of all people. And for all the provision and all the protection, the heart of God is to keep a whole, some restored world together. And God invites humanity to enjoy the bounty, but to be careful of the boundary. And we know what happens. We know that humanity made their choice and went out of bounds. And as a result of that, in their realization, they were, became aware of their raw state, as it were. They understood as a consequence of stepping out of bounds, they were naked. And that was a realization that they had stripped their relationship with God from what it was meant to be. And we are told that when they heard God walking in the garden, they hid. You see, at Christmas, we celebrate an incarnational movement of God, Emmanuel, God with us. But in the creation story, we have the incarnational God at work there. For we hear that God was close. He was walking in the garden. They heard him and they hid. And God says, where are you? It seems incredible that an all-powerful an all-knowing, an all-present God should ask the question, where, you, where are you? But this question underpins the reality that God is a relational father. And in asking the question, he wants a confessional response from his children to have this shared, restored relationship from what 
has been broken. For he was asking them, where are you in light of the choice that you have made? Where are you now in this moment where I am seeking you? Throughout the whole of the Old Testament, we see humanity searching and seeking, struggling and striving to be in this right shared covenant relationship with God. Some battles won, some battles lost, some grounds grounds gained, some lost. It was a constant battle and constant struggle. Then we have the new creation story, the birth of Jesus. And there we see where man has traveled, but significantly more where this relationship between God and man is journeying. For suddenly there is an incredible shift Because now it is not God asking the question of humanity, but rather humanity is asking the question, where is God? Where is he who is born to be born the king of the Jews? Where is God? Unlike the question in the Garden of Eden where God waits for a response from Adam, here the question asked by those who have studied the stars they followed up their question with an immediate statement of response for they added, we saw his star come up in the east and we have come to worship him. This search is not uh, for someone hidden by creation in the thicket of a garden, but this search is for someone who is revealed by creation, the star that leads them and would ultimately lead them to where Jesus is on his throne, a manger in a cattle shed. The question that these men who study the stars ask would not bring the kind of challenge that resulted from the question that God asked for the snake and for Adam and Eve. But this question, where is he who is born to be king of the Jews? would not bring a challenge, but would champion who Jesus is. For they add, for we have come to worship him. The text this morning reminds us that God is incarnational. He is always close by us. He is always with us. And we've had that underpinned by the ministry from the singing and the playing of the band this morning. That God is with us. Nori and I can share a similar story of Silent Night. When Noreen was a youngster living in Durham, she went with a group to visit and sing at Durham Prison during Christmas. When we were stationed at a place called Siam Harbour in County Durham, our band went to play Christmas carols at Durham Prison. And on both occasions, in in the part of the prison that is for the most serious offenders who were not able to be released, from their cells in asking for favorite carols they asked for silent night and echoing down this corridor full of men who had uh, committed the most atrocious kinds of crimes in life you had the world the words resounding that come in two of the verses of silent night jesus christ is here even in this place jesus christ is here because our God is an incarnational God he is Emmanuel God with us and as we listen to God saying to us where are you or in our search this Christmas where is he we have the assurance that God is close that God is with us he is incarnational This morning, the text reminds us that God wants a relationship with us. Wherever we are, whatever we've done, however we choose to work out that relationship with him. God wants and is desperate to have a relationship with his world and to restore his broken world through Jesus. Everything that we are and everything that we give and do should be as an act of worship to who Jesus is. 
It is not a full stop story that we have come to worship him simply as the Christ child where he is. It is the eternal message of God that God's people need to humble themselves and come to worship the Lord our God that is ours in Jesus. There's also a significant reminder that there's never a time or ever a place where we cannot search for and find Jesus. There is never a time and there is never a place where we cannot search for, discover, and find and embrace Jesus. So maybe this Advent and Christmas, our encounter with baby Jesus could be in a place, could be at a time that we do not expect. But nevertheless, we have that moment of encounter with Jesus. Our encounter with baby Jesus this Advent and Christmas could be to respond to him and to tell him where we are in the choices that we have made in life. Or where we are in the knowledge that he is searching and seeking a relationship with us. Our encounter of baby Jesus this Advent and Christmas could, a, could mean a saying to God, either in the hidden places of our inner souls, in the thicket, in the garden, or in the most open place where we have confidence in all that God is, in his forgiveness, in his mercy, in his grace. Whether in the hidden space and place or whether in the most open place, we need to say to Jesus, Jesus, come into my world because I need you. So this morning from the creation to the crib, where are you? Where is he? And in it all, where are we in that story? As we reflect on that, we're going to sing the words of some of the verses of In the Bleak Midwinter. This song written that doesn't make sense in its atmospheric sense, that place where Jesus was born, frosty winds made moan. But it makes sense that Jesus was born into a cold and broken world, into a fragmented, hard world of oppression. And yet into that world came this gift of God to release the captives and set people free and bring liberty and bring an invitation what can I give him? So as we sing these verses of this song this morning, as we sing them, let's consider the creation and the crib questions this morning. Where are you? Where is he? And where are we in the midst of that?
God, we have sung those words so many times, on so many occasions, over so many years. And yet this morning we want them to, we want you to breathe a new sense of reality into those words. But breathe a new sense of reality into those words, into our lives. And what it means to understand the context of the world that we live in but equally what it means to bring our world to you and to bring our own personal world to you and to seek and search after that right relationship with you. So Father God, we come to you as our creator, Father God, and as your confessional children. We want to say to you this morning that we love you we need you and we invite you into our world. Amen. So we trust as we, as we come to our final song of worship, we trust that you have a sense of the blessing of the Lord upon you. And if you don't, if, you, if you're wrestling with him or you feel far away from him, then, then take what you've felt, take what you've heard this morning, which is incumbent on, all, on us all to do, and let God's Holy Spirit, Spirit bring the Spirit of Jesus right close into our world as we have prayed. So as we sing a song of celebration, joy to the world, the Lord has come. The Lord is come. Let's stand, let's sing, let's celebrate the good news of Jesus. Thanks. <laughs> May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen.